Hey there, I hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, I share behind the scenes of the Rustic Songbird podcast, where I interview Angela Mastro Giacomo, and we talk all about the best ways to get press for your music. Angela shares some amazing tips and advice for anyone getting started and wanting to put your music out there. She shares some practical tools that you can get started with right away. And we just talk about the music industry in general and as an independent artist, some things that you can put into place to help get more promotion and press for your own music. So I hope you enjoy this interview. I want to invite you to subscribe and I have new videos coming out every single week, so I don't want you to miss them. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope you enjoy this interview with Angela, all about the best ways to get press for your music. I want to invite you to be part of the Confident Songwriter mini course, which is a free four day challenge that I created for songwriters who want to build their confidence to put their music out there because perfection is overrated. So to sign up, go to rusticsongbird.com forward slash challenge. You can sign up today for that free four day challenge to boost your confidence and put your music out there. I'm excited to invite you to be a part of it and would love for you to sign up. Go to rusticsongbird.com forward slash challenge and I'll see you in there. My guest on the show today is Angela Mastro Giacomo, and she is here to talk about the best ways you can get press for your music. And this is a topic we haven't talked about on the podcast before, so I'm super excited to share Angela's story and to learn from her and her experience. So, Angela, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for agreeing to share some of your experience and your wisdom uh, just from working with clients, people in the music industry, and to share what's working for someone who's wanting to get their music out to more people and build their audience. But first, let's talk about your story and how you got started doing this. It, I mean, probably about a decade. Oh my God. Yeah, I've been in this for a decade. <laughs> And I mean, I think like most great things in life, it was completely accidental. Um, you know, I stumbled across this emerging band. They were opening for one of my favorite bands. And I was so, so struck by their stage presence, which I know is a like a totally different topic, but a lot of live shows suck. Like they're very boring. And this band was just killing it. Like they were giving it all their energy. And I was so enamored with it that out of nowhere, I was like, I have to interview these guys. Like, I have to tell their story. Like, I don't even know what their story is, but I have to tell their story. Um, and this was 2009, so there weren't a ton of music blogs or anything. Uh, but somehow I got it in my head that I had to interview them. And uh, somehow it seemed like the easiest way was to just start a new blog and do it that way. So that's how I got started in the industry, it was very serendipitous. I started my music blog. Um, and then about five years into that, after graduating college and just getting laid off from job after job, uh, I was like, you know what, I'd like to uh, not get laid off anymore. And so again, just very naively, thank goodness, um, I was like, oh, I'll just start my own company and then I can't get laid off anymore. And it right. worked, it worked. And so that's how I started Muddy Paw PR and that has been going for about five, five and a half years. Um, and then I feel like every five years I introduce something new because then recently, just in the last couple months, I started this new um, like year round mentorship community called Thrive, where every month we have different guest experts in to do like live Q and A's on everything from like how to book more shows or, you know, like how to get a manager, how to get on a festival, um, as well as like monthly masterminds and a bunch of other cool stuff. So that's kind of been my, my journey so far. And we'll, we'll see what happens in another five years. <laughs> I love that you're doing that and you're sharing your knowledge and what you've learned with emerging artists, people that are getting started that are serious and wanting to build this into a career. And so you're creating resources for them and also connecting them with other experts in the music industry. So that is just so perfect for my audience as well, because it's for musicians and songwriters who are wanting to take that next step and get better and put their music out there to more people. And so one of the ways that they can do that is to pitch their music to press. But when you think about that, if you haven't done that before, you're like, how do I even start with, you know, pitching to newspaper, radio, TV, blogs, anything like that. And so I think it's going to be a really good topic to talk about that today. And you've got a lot of experience doing this, but I love that part of your story is that you found a band that you really believed in and you just wanted to promote them. You wanted to share about um, what you liked about that band and you wanted to get their music out to more people. And so people that are listening 
might be thinking, um, yeah, I want to find those ways to share my excitement for what I'm doing for my music. So I think this is going to be really helpful for our listeners today. So share with me a little bit about um, your experience in PR and like what you learned through that. I mean, I was really, the way I learned, I really taught myself PR because I, I always try to emphasize this because I had zero background. Like I had no idea what PR was. So um, certainly if I could figure it out and learn how to pitch and, um, and do all of that, like anybody can. I'd never taken, I think I took like one PR class and it was not really at all about PR. Um, but what I did is because I was on the, I was, you know, running the blog, like I got all these press releases, I got all these pitches. And so I was able to teach myself basically like what I liked, what I didn't like, you know, what got my attention, what didn't. And so I think that's a really great place to start. I know not everybody necessarily has that access, but I think most artists at this point have at least one or two friends that are also writers. Like most of us have a circle that includes somebody that writes for a blog or like does something like that. They probably get pitches. And if you don't, ask because I like if somebody asked me like send me an example of a pitch um, and like we talked about that's going to be in the freebie so like you can just get it there but like that's how I learned um, and I think that is one of the best ways to learn but as far as just starting out I mean I always say the number one thing that you want to do I mean there's so many topics so like let me know I know I'm like all over the place here but one of the most important things is really that relationship building piece so if you can before you're even reaching out to somebody you want to have an idea of like okay, what outlet do I want to reach out to? Uh, what writer is going to be the best fit for my music? And then how do I make a personal connection there? You know, if you can make that personal connection before you ever pitch them just through like commenting on their Instagram, um, you know, for even just like a week or something of going back and forth, showing them, you know, having your little face and photo pop up on the notifications. Like when you do pitch them, there's going to be that familiarity there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where would you recommend people start to pitch themselves as an artist? Like say somebody's coming out with their own song release or an album release, they're putting out music for the first time and they want to promote that. Where would you recommend they start pitching it? I always recommend starting with smaller outlets. So like smaller blogs, smaller playlists. Um, it's very tempting to want to just jump to like alternative press or billboard or like some major Spotify official playlist and odds are that's not going to happen for you right away and it's not because you suck it's not because like it's not because of anything other than there are just building blocks and i think artists have to try to remember that whether it's a blog or tv or radio or a spotify playlist these are businesses and if you are just starting out, if you don't really have a huge fan base, um, if, if you don't have an engaged fan base, like if there's not a lot going on there, there's not necessarily as much incentive for them to share that because you have to remember they're a business. And so, yeah, they might love your music, but they have to be getting something back. So if they share that, they want to know that they're also going to get in front of your large audience, that you're going to be able to promote it to a larger audience. And so that's why I say if you start with these smaller outlets, you can really um, start to build some momentum, build some buzz. And you also are just growing these relationships because don't forget a lot of these writers that start at smaller outlets, you know, in a year, once you've grown, like you don't know, they may be at that bigger outlet and that will be a connection that you've made and you guys have grown together. And now you're in a place and they're in a place where you can get more exposure. Yes. I love that, that you start with smaller outlets. And that's kind of what I did when I first started writing songs, recording, put the, putting them out there, I would just send an announcement to my local newspaper. And I actually got featured a few times, like in their entertainment section or in their community section. And I would try to tie it to like a release concert or some kind of event where I was performing the new songs to give them something to talk about. And so I would say, you know, like local singer coming out with new music and you can come and listen in person here. And then here's the website. So I basically like sent them a one sheet press release that they could either use as it is, or they could use that and then call me and do an interview. And sometimes they would call me and get a quote, you know, and add that into the other details I already sent. So that's what I started with. And I actually got featured a few times in our local newspaper just by doing that. Well, you bring up two really good points, which, you know, one of them is make it as easy as possible for them to 
post about you. So like you said, like you yeah. included the one sheet or, you know, you include a press release so that if they do just want to like copy and paste that you've made it super easy for them. And the other thing is you, you give them a story to tell. So, you know, you make mm -hmm. it about something. If you just say like, I'm an artist releasing music. Well, great. Like, so are a million other people, you know, um, you have to find a story and that's, you know, that's certainly something that we do with our clients and something that I think really any successful artist doing this uh, also does, which is you find the story in it. Like it's not enough for it to just be good music. So like, think about what is this song about? Like, what is my band about? Like, what is our, and this is why branding becomes so important too. Um, you know, like for instance, one of our artists, her song has, her old album is very, very heavily political leaning. And so like we've reached out to music blogs and said like, this is some, this is the cause. This is, you know, we've made it bigger than the music. But then we also reached out to non-music blogs, you know, that just were geared towards whatever the theme of that song was. Mm, um, and that's yeah. another really good way to get in front of a new audience. I love that. And one time I heard about um, a themed project that someone did about sailboats and so all of their songs were like boating songs. It was about the ocean and like life on the sea or whatever. And so all of those songs had the same theme and they ended up sending it to, I think, magazines that were like boating magazines, sailing magazines. It was not about music at all, but it was something different. It was like, hey, here's a playlist or here's an album for something that you're actually interested in. Like it was either people's hobby or just something that they enjoyed. And it made that connection, even though it's outside of the music. So I really like that you brought that up. I think themed albums are the way to go, actually, because you're actually uh, connecting with a very specific part of your audience. Yeah, I love it. I love it because like the other thing, too, is I mean, obviously, music blogs are uh, amazing and wonderful, but I always sort of compare it to like. I guess nobody does this anymore. There aren't magazines and waiting rooms, but like when you would go to a, a waiting room, right. And you like flip through a magazine and you'd end up reading this interview about the celebrity that you didn't really care about. But then they said something that resonated. Like maybe they said like, I have anxiety. And you're like, Oh my God, I have anxiety too. Like we're very similar. Like there's some sort of connection that you weren't expecting. And then all of a sudden you want to check out their movies or you want to check out their music. And so that's why I think things like that, where you're not necessarily expecting to be sold to in the same way you might be on a music blog. Um, and there's just, like I said, just a totally different audience. So that's so cool about the sailboat thing too. That's so clever. <laughs> yeah. I think that was one thing that really stuck with me because for a while when I was getting started in music, I would write songs in different genres and I was trying different things out, talking about different topics, trying to figure out like what my message was. And so part of that was trying things. I mean, I think testing and figuring things out is important. So you don't have to like just pick one thing and never change because my music has changed over time. But I do like having one project to be a consistent theme in itself. Like I released a whole album of lullabies and that's very specific to little babies to help them go to sleep and also for mom's peace of mind. And so I'm like, um, you know, promoting this to moms who have babies who need to go to sleep. So it's like a solution to a problem. And it's very, very specific. Another way that I, I did this in my music is I did a whole album of Christmas carols. And they're just acoustic guitar and me singing, just very simple, traditional Christmas carols. And so that's something that's a seasonal theme. It comes around every single year. I use it for Christmas tours and I've gotten featured on some Christmas playlists because it's very specific to that theme. And so I think reaching outside of the music realm of things will help get attention because you can connect with things that relate to people. Like you said, um, you might relate to someone having anxiety, but you might not have thought about you know, their story the same way. But now looking back at that, you're like, oh, I feel that connection, even though it wasn't their main story. You know, maybe they were an actor, maybe they were in a movie or something. But the one thing that connected you is something that you'll remember. And so I think it's good to have a holistic view of connecting with people on a human level. Yeah, well, that's, that is exactly it. When you boil it down, it's just connecting, like just connect human to human. It's really that simple, um, which I know it's easy to overthink it, but when you boil it down, like that is kind of why most of us got into this to begin with. Yeah, it's so true. So share some stories with me. I know you've worked with a lot of different artists. What are the biggest struggles you see with people trying to get their music out there and building an audience? 
my God, there's so many. Um, I think, <laughs> I think a lot of it just comes down to a lack of organization, strategy, and patience. It's always one of those three mm. things, you know, um, either we see a lot of artists wanting to rush. They're like, Oh, you know, they just want to put out the song or put out the album. And then they don't know why yeah. nobody is listening. Cause there's no strategy behind it. Um, in the same kind of realm, like they, you know, maybe they even have a release plan like maybe they've you know they've hired a publicist or something um or they've just decided to like do the DIY PR themselves but they don't do the other stuff on the back end you know they're not building up their fan base they're not on social media or like kind of going back to social media and I mean this is just as frustrating to me as anyone else like I get it it sounds ridiculous that we spend so much time on it but again it is a tool for connection and so if you're not, if you're just posting and you're not putting any thought behind it, you know, it gets very confusing. Your audience doesn't really know what to expect. Um, they don't necessarily care because there's no theme, there's no curation. It's just sort of like, oh, this was on my mind today, here we go. Um, which is fine if you're just a person, but like if you're a band and you're trying to cultivate a following, like think about any major celebrity, like think about Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, like Beyonce, like you kind of have an idea of exactly who they are when you think of them. Um, and that's because they've spent a lot of time curating that and doing things, whether it's in their live show, the way they perform, the way they dress, in their promo photos, how they look, in their social media, what they talk about, what their captions are, uh, their merch, what kind of merch they have. What, like, it all is very curated. And so while I don't think you need to spend like 20 hours a week doing this, I do think you have to spend some time figuring out what it is you actually want to say and then taking the time to organize those thoughts. So. Maybe that means at the beginning of the month, you sit down, you spend a day, you schedule out all your social media. Now you don't have to think about it, but because you did that one session, you know that all of those posts sort of feed on the same like two to three themes. And those themes should work together. Like it shouldn't be like my themes are food and exercise and like playing saxophone. Cause like those don't necessarily make sense together. Um, so I just think it's a, it's a matter of having a strategy, having the patience to execute it, um, and just being organized. I, I know it's exciting. You want to get it out there, um, but it's just not how it works. Yeah, let's talk about the organization for a minute. What's a good way to set up a system of continuing to promote your music? Because we did talk about like if you have a new release or something, that's a great way to like have a push for a promotion, but you want to consistently be showing up and be putting things out all the time. So what's a good scheduling organizational system for someone to be promoting their music like year round? I really think that the best way to promote your music is to not promote your music. <laughs> you know, like it's none of us like seeing somebody that's just like, this is my song. This is my song. This is my song. It's like, okay, well, great. But like, if I don't know who you are or care, I probably don't care about your song either. Um, all of the music that I like, whether it's a huge artist or an indie artist, I can tell you it's because I feel like I have a personal relationship with them, whether or not they know who I am, like it's a relationship, you know, I feel like they get yeah. me in some way, um, or I feel like they have gone the extra mile in some way. And so again, like, I think at least for me, the way I've found that it makes the most sense is to really sit down and like, just know what you're doing. Like, again, I'm a big fan of time blocking. So like sitting down at the beginning of the month, this is the theme. Okay. Here's all the social media posts that are going out. If I have if I have five posts going out, then definitely not more than one of those should be about my music. Everything else should be brand building. And then just maybe one post that's like, by the way, did you see my song? And even that should not be check out my song. It should be a story. And at the end of the story is the part about checking out the song, you know? Um, like maybe your story is about heartbreak. And so you're like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like you have some sort of caption about some story that of you going through this heartbreak and or how you know what it feels like to do this, like something that's going to connect. And then you mention the song at the end. But if you're always just leading with your music, people just don't, they just don't care. That's a really good point. They, they want to know who you are as a person before they'll pay attention to yeah. your music. So sharing things that are important to you, using your platform. And I really like that you said sharing stories because stories are what connect us. That's what people are going to remember. And people love stories right and so if it's like a real life story of you and maybe how you started as a musician or how you wrote the song or the life circumstance that happened to you know bring this all together like I think that's really important people want to see the behind the scenes and not just the polished like finished product at the end 
Yeah. And I think, I mean, I mean, if you need any more proof, like just look at whether it's politicians or speakers or like anybody that has any kind of sway in the world, like it, they're telling stories constantly. And it's because like you said, that's sort of um, like, that is actually how we connect to things. It's how we remember things. It's how things resonate with us. I could tell you the same thing in bullet point facts and then, or weave it into a story. And if I tell you the bullet point, like you're maybe going to walk away with one or two, but if I tell you the story, like you're going to remember the whole thing. They're really powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true because people can picture it. They can imagine it in their mind and you're giving them details for the story. And like you said, they're more likely to remember it that way than if you just give them the punchline or just have no context around it. So the story gives it context. And I think that's really important to think about when we're scheduling out our social media posts. And I love time blocking as well to just do a lot of the same thing at once, like in a chunk, like maybe an hour, or it doesn't have to be a long time, but just blocking off a time to focus and just stay in that idea um, because then you're not having to go back and forth and waste a lot of time, you know, trying to figure it out on a daily basis. So that's what a lot of people are doing. They're figuring out, well, what should I post today? And then they go blank. But if you can plan it out, then it makes more sense. And if you know, okay, I'm going to share a story. Okay, now what story do I want to share? And like you said, maybe pick three to five things about your life that you can share consistently. And that's your brand building over time. People will know those things about you, those quirks, like about uh, taking your dog for a walk or that you love eating mac and cheese or whatever it is that's not connected to your music, but it's connected to you as a person. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. And I, like the other good thing with the time blocking, you know, especially on the day to day or whether you schedule it out, like I was just talking to somebody about this the other day and I, they were, they were saying this, they were like, I don't know how to get organized. Like, I don't know where to start. I was like, listen, just like pick a time and do it all the time. So if, it's as simple as like, maybe you don't have a lot of time during the week. So every Saturday from 12 to four, like you're not scheduling anything. That's when you're doing whatever, practicing, writing a new song, scheduling mm -hmm. out social media, whatever. Like every Saturday, one to four, doesn't matter, you're doing it. Or maybe it's every day from like seven to 9 p.m. That's when you, like just set a time and stick to it. Don't try to change it around all the time. Um, just have that consistency and stick to it. And then it's so much easier because you know what you're supposed to be doing. Like, you know, okay, it's Saturday, mm -hmm. one o'clock, like I'm supposed to be doing this. Um, I mean, that's certainly what I do on a day to day when I write everything out because you do get distracted. And when I start to get distracted or I get a phone call or something, I can look back down and go, okay, it's one o'clock. That's right. This is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And you can just get back into it. Yeah, I love that. And as a creative person, I remember trying to buck this idea a while back um, when I would think like it was going to cramp my creativity to have a certain time to be creative like, I don't know if I'm going to be feeling it right then, you know? And so, um, especially now, like as life has gotten busier, as I've become a mom and my time is, you know, spread thin at this point in my life, I can tell like, if it's not on the calendar, it's not happening. Yeah. And so I really working within that structure allows me to be creative to say, okay, well now is the time for family stuff. And now is the time for writing. And now is the time for, you know, whatever I want to do with my music if I don't block off that time, it's probably not going to spontaneously happen. So I think <laughs> within that structure to say, okay, now's my time to focus on this, then you're allowing yourself to be creative within structure, but it's more likely to happen if it's on the calendar. Yeah, it's definitely not happening if it's not on the calendar. And I think the proof is that a lot of people listening are probably, they probably know that they've probably been spinning their wheels thinking, I don't have time. I don't have time. And like, look, I'm not saying you're not busy, but like you have time. It's just a matter of making it. And I do think it's a huge stress reliever. It gets rid of so much anxiety to just know, like you don't have to worry about when you're doing it because you know, you know, it's whatever day at whatever time, like this is when I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can almost relax because you know it's going yeah. to happen. Yeah, I totally agree. And one thing we were talking about before we started the interview was that a lot of people have some extra time right now if they're not going into their jobs if they're not commuting a lot of people are working from home right now and so things are shifting and changing and all of a sudden we have time for things that we usually say we don't have time for and so now is actually the perfect time to be working on your music to be working on your systems to be sending stuff out 
things you can do from home without um, interacting with people <laughs> right now we're kind of in social isolation but that doesn't mean that you can't send emails or make phone calls or make plans or even just the slowing down of making your strategy so what's your recommendation like what's your advice to somebody who has suddenly found themselves with some free time I would think about, and this is probably going to dawn on you pretty quickly. I would think about like the one thing that you have been saying for too long that you have to do, you know, like, I think it's very easy for us to be like, I've certainly fallen into this room. Like, oh my God. Like, and I actually don't have any extra time because I already worked from home before. So nothing's really changed, but I feel this pressure because everybody else does where I'm like, oh, I should do this and this. And there's like 20 things that I'm trying to do on top of the 50 I'm already trying to do. And so I think it's easy for us to fall into that. Where we're like, oh my God, I have all this extra time. Like I should, I should be doing blah, 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 blah. But mm. I would say like, think about the one thing that you actually have been wanting to do. You know, it's been at, you're like, you're like oh, if I just had time, you know, whether it's like, I finally want to get my email list together. Or I'm like, finally going to work on my social media strategy. Like whatever it is, maybe it's just that you want to practice an extra hour a day. Whatever that one thing is that you've been wanting to do, just give it your full attention. Do not try to do 15 different things. Don't even try to do five different things. Just do the one thing, do it really well get it done and then you can start thinking about the next thing um but you're you're going to waste your time and waste your energy if you're just trying to still do five different things it, it won't work just focus on the one that is so good and i appreciate you bringing that up that the one thing that keeps it less stressful like when you think about all the things you want to do then you're so overwhelmed and you don't even start with one but if you do start with one and you finish something then you're building momentum, then you finish one other thing, then you finish something else, and then you're making all of this amazing, <laughs> creative and productive work that, you know, wouldn't have happened if you didn't start with that one thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you definitely, like, nobody needs my permission, but, like, if you're listening, you're like, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm giving you permission, like, just do the thing, and do the thing, like I said, you want to do, because, like there's no, there is actually no better time to do it. Like you probably will not get, I mean, fingers crossed, right? Like you won't get this opportunity again. So just focus on it. And then, yeah, like, like you said, the momentum, I mean, that is, you can't measure that kind of progress, you know, just that feeling of like, I accomplished this thing that I've been wanting to do and I feel really good about it. That's going to set you up for success so much more than half doing, you know, five different things. Yes. And I am a 20 tabs open kind of person. <laughs> I have so many ideas and things going on. Like if something's loading, I'm switching over to that another tab to like do something else while that's happening. And so this is something that does not come as easily to me, but I have seen that when I make that time to focus on one thing until it's done, I'm actually more productive. And so I think that's really, really sound advice. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about what you're working on right now. I know you have a free training to share. So tell me a little bit about that and what's inside. Yeah. So I have a four part uh, video series, just these small, like five to seven minute videos that are really just meant to get you set up and going. So like, if you've been listening to this and you're like, this all sounds great, but like, I still don't necessarily know exactly where to start, or um, I still don't know exactly how to do whatever. Uh, this is sort of a one-on-one, like get you on your feet type of thing. Um, it's called how to build an audience without spending a dime, which of course for now, I mean, for any time it's perfect, but I think for now, especially, um, and each of these videos just has these tips and strategies and these small actionable items that you can start to implement right away to start, you know, building your fan base, um, starting to get press, things like that. Um, and there's also a pitch template included. So if you are like me and you need examples, like you need to look at something and create from that, yeah. then that should be super helpful. Um, and it's, it's my pitch template, like with, it's even got the little bits in there where it's like, do this here, do this here. So um, hopefully that is helpful, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's free and I think you'll like it. <laughs> That's awesome. We're going to link to that free training in the show notes. So you can go click on that link in the description of this show and go check it out for the free training with Angela. And tell me where people can find you online and get connected with what you're doing. So my PR company is just muddypawpr.com and it's the same thing, muddypawpr on all socials. And then my website uh, is angelamastergiacomo.com. And my socials are Angela underscore Mastro. 
Awesome. I really appreciate your time today being on the show and sharing from your experience, sharing some of your story. I really am enjoying getting to know you more. And I think that what you're doing, helping musicians is so perfect for the listeners here on the podcast. So I'm excited to introduce you to them and let them get connected with what you're doing. So thanks for your time today and for sharing about ways to get press. I think that's really helpful and some sound advice for anyone trying to build their audience and promote their own music. So thank you again for being on the show. You're super sweet. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this interview from the Rustic Songbird podcast. I want to invite you to subscribe for even more coming soon on this channel. And also, if you want to check out all the previous episodes, you can go to rusticsongbird.com forward slash podcast. All right, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video.